Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, as you all know, I'm going to be doing a daily market recap basically every day for the foreseeable future because why not? I hope you guys get something from this content and even though I didn't take a trade today, I'd love to talk about what I've seen in the market and essentially why I didn't take a trade. So, also, to all my Canadian friends out there, we just got three feet of snow, winter is here. I hope you're all warm and safe and bundled up. <laughs> I'm looking outside right now and there is so much snow, it's crazy. Anyways, let's get back to the charts and we'll hop right in. I'll try to make this a quick video and we'll just talk about what I see, seen. All right, so. Let's start on the daily time frame. Now, of course, we know we had this weekly inversion volume imbalance, and our ultimate goal is to get down to this weekly volume imbalance, take out these lows as well. I did want to see a higher move Monday and Tuesday, just so we could make the high on Tuesday and then potentially go lower for the rest of the week. We had news this morning at 9.45 and 10, so I'm sure that had to do with some of the co-raising movement we had. <laughs> More just like back and forth movement, so. All right, so of course, we had this daily fair value gap form yesterday, and I marked it out with our purple box, labeled it daily fair value gap, but I also drew out the consequent encroachment of the daily fair value gap. Now let's drop down to the one hour time frame with the mindset that we're probably gonna go higher to go lower for the rest of the week. So I already had the, I have these lunch highs drawn out, which is basically yesterday's high, but it was formed at one. So they're considered a lunch high. <laughs> I wanted to see these highs get taken out and traded into the daily fair value gap, potentially the consequent encroachment of the daily fair value gap, and maybe even these London high relative equal highs slash weekly volume inversion volume imbalance, which we did talk about those yesterday. So I had already had this marked up on my charts, and then this morning I marked up this high right here. I marked up these New York PM session lows from yesterday and of course the daily low down here and the consequent encroachment of this wick for potential targets. We also had this London session low right here that formed at 4 a.m. So I had that marked up on our charts as well. So those are our lines on the one hour chart. Basically, what I wanted to see happen was our potential draw on liquidity is going to be these lunchtime highs, potentially the consequent encroachment of the daily fair value gap before we drop lower. But I did want to see buys today just because we're kind of uptrending and yes. So let's get down to the 15 minute chart. So of course, we did have a higher opening range gap. We did have this 15 minute fair value gap, so I marked that out because we had a very nice respectable retracement down into it. And then of course we see it come right back down one more time before the open and then one more time at 9.45. So this is all good information. Basically we want to see this because we want to trade down into a higher time frame objective before we go into our draw on liquidity, which of course is these lunch highs and the daily fair value gap. Sorry about the background noise. My computer is a little bit heating up. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that. Maybe you guys could give me a tip on what to do. Anyways, so we have this 15 minute fair value gap here and then of course the opening range gap. I did want to see it trade down into this before making our way higher. Now, the reason I didn't take a trade, let's hop down to the five minute chart, 
was because when we had news, and I usually do like trading news days just because we get more volatility in the market. However, look at how we just kind of went up and then down and up and then down and it was just kind of like this morning session was just kind of like news and then news and then we just kept on consolidating slash like really big up and down moves and I didn't really like seeing that so right away I was like okay like the market's gonna probably offer us high resistance liquidity runs which is something we don't necessarily like trading <laughs> so Again, with that mindset, I was like, okay, like, we'll just kind of see how the market plays out. If there's something that's pretty obvious, we'll take it. But I'm not going to use my emotional or my uh, emotional like uh, capacity, I guess, to take a trade today. If it's just going to be up and down, up and down, and then, you know, it's just not worth it. There's so many better days that I'd rather trade. So we see, of course, take out these highs with this news driver, come back down. We didn't take out this low, but on the NAS and the Dow, we did take out that low, in fact. So we have a bit of SMT here. Again, we traded into this 15 minute for value gap, which is actually great. I did wanna see that. That's awesome that that happened. Again, like the market's low, just coming back and forth. Let's hop down to the one minute really quick so essentially what I wanted to see was us trade into this lunch highs and then reverse and we can see a reversal happening right now again I stopped trading at 10:59, so I didn't actually get to get into any of this but this would have been a nice setup break a market structure comes down we have this fair value gap right here. We can enter in at that and then, of course, take out the sell side liquidity here. And I believe this will continue lower into the opening range gap low, new week opening range, new week opening gap. So I expect it to move lower, but again, I don't trade after 1059s. So, all right. Yeah, the one minute, you can just see it. It's like up and down and then up and then down. But these are like big runs. Like I don't mind if it goes a little bit like, you know, up, down, up, down, still giving us that kind of trending look. But when it's like, you know, it's just that to me is just consolidation and it's just not good. So. Because of that, we didn't really want to enter in this market. And then I was like, okay, I see this fair value gap. It's after the news. I had it drawn out. I was like, okay. And then the fact that it broke through, I did not like that at all. But then we had this somewhat of a displacement run higher. And I was like, okay, nice. Like we're breaking market structure. We have this displacement run. This looks pretty good, except I didn't like how we traded outside of this fair value gap. If we would have stayed inside this fair value gap, I think this trade would have been better. But I mean, look, we have this fair value gap form during this displacement run. Again, our target would have been the consequent encroachment of the fair value gap, the daily fair value gap. So, you know, at the end of the day, like this could have been a trade potentially. We had our 10 points uh, drawn liquidity still. We didn't break this lunch high yet. And you know, this could have been a good trade, but the fact that I was seeing this movement and then this uh, one minute fair value got broken to the downside, I was like, I don't really know if we're gonna come up here and then blow past this again and continue this up and down movement. but. We did manage to trade into our London highs or lunch highs right here, which is nice and I'm happy, but can you imagine being in this trade back and forth, you know, and then finally breaking higher? We didn't quite hit that 10 point mark. So again, like it could have been a good setup it could have gotten in that trade, but I was just not 
like just like the past year seeing this price action I was not very keen on getting into a trade I'm just happy to see that it did come up to our target here of the lunch highs and then seeing it break down is pretty cool too like seeing it now doing what I want it to do if this could have happened earlier that would have been great maybe I could have got into a trade but I'm not upset about it I'm not sad that I didn't get in a trade I know that there's more trading days left like there's always tomorrow there's always Thursday there's always Friday you know like I'm not in a rush to get into something like this especially because we broke this one minute pair value gap I was like it just doesn't make sense you know like it, the fact that it went lower broke this broke out of this broke this low too I mean it just didn't make sense you know for me and not even just break it like we full-on like close below it but we did have the displacement run breaking this market structure fair value gap again but then we would have had to sit in this for a bit and some days it's just better just to watch the markets as they unfold I was still watching I was checking out these fair value gaps I was like okay like let's see what happens but yeah, personally, but it's nice to see now we have this break of market structure here, entry fair value gap, and now we're continuing to move lower. I Again, I would like to see it close in this opening range gap right here. So the consequent encroachment of the new week opening gap, we have these London lows down here that it could reach for, for today, possibly making the new high of the week right here, which is a Tuesday's high so far. So yeah we'll see we'll see what else the market has to unfold but i'll stop the video there i hope you all enjoyed this daily recap cheers for hopping on again even though we didn't take a trade we learned we watched the market so we're gaining knowledge so i don't think this day was a loss at all we had a good day of trading, good day learning, and I got to look at some beautiful snow. <laughs> all right, that is it for me. I'll see you all tomorrow, and we'll talk then. All right, have a good night, guys. Bye.